My name is Janet Pierce, and I'm an artist who's worked in many, many media for 30 years. So these paintings here are uh, the gloaming, and they're very light and full of air. But I'm still working on this one, but I'm trying to get that sense of light and warmth. You go to paint, and you think you're going to do these lovely light and uh, they're quite dark coming towards light. So I was looking at them and thinking, where did that come from? But then I thought to myself, they're a bit like fire. You know, you, you, you don't really know when you're painting what's going to come out. I know where I'm heading and I know what I want to do, but <laughs> you kind of have to go with the flow and be prepared to move with it. Due to uh, a notion to start swimming in the lake very close to where I live, I have become obsessed with that lake in all its different moods. This year I've been swimming there since April, uh, which was cold. Now it's sublime, it's warm, it's Mediterranean. But as everyone who knows Ireland knows, this is, this is rare. Living here, as you've seen from all the landscape, you, I'm obsessed with sap green because Everything is green at the moment. Everywhere you look is green. For many years of my life, I have lived beside lake water, either in Loch Erne in County Fermanagh or Anna McCarrick Lake, which is here in County Monaghan. Ushka Anam is Irish Gaelic for soul water. That's what I called the works. This is still, I've been down at the lake. I'm still thinking of the lake. This is the series of watercolour paintings I did whilst swimming every day in the lake beside my home. Being alone in the emptiness of that treacle water lake, accompanied only by the occasional cormorant and a few swans, was the ideal setting for deep soul reflection. It's this difficulty I have of being fluid and yet it's always about Letting go and not letting go. This balance, which is a lot of life and a lot of meditation. When do you stay in charge and when don't you? It rained mostly every day for several of the weeks, unlike the present. The clouds could be low and then suddenly a shaft of brilliant sunshine would light up the water and my soul. These are Japanese brushes, which I think are the best because they hold a lot of liquid but they can come down to a very fine point. Okay, so that's going to go outside and dry off in the sun until we see how it turns out. Sometimes I felt like the atmosphere, cloudy, misty, unclear of the direction I should take. Other days the sky was bright blue and life seemed full of gentle possibility. That's why people love en plein air, as they say, painting in the sunshine. So I wrote that maybe two years ago and exhibited the paintings, but I was not ready to let the lake go. I put them on the wall and then I sit in my chair and then look at them. And I think probably as an artist, you spend as much time looking as you actually spend painting. Because it's so easy to overdo things these watercolour paintings of the lake were exhibited in Sligo a year ago and I'm still, still at it. Of course it's changing because I'm changing because painting is always your inside, it's, it's a bridge between the outside world and your inside world and my inside world's changing. But um, I still love the emptiness of it. You can still, it's a great holder of emotions. I mean, landscape contains emotion, your own emotion, but I do think water does too. And of course, I'm running out of sap green for all those colours. I just have to order some more this morning. A warm red. which is a fugitive colour. Light red, it's opaque. A lazarin crimson is a fugitive colour. You can see through it, but that's opaque. So you're, you're playing all the time because the real beauty of watercolour 
is its transparency. And if you're not going to, there's no point in doing watercolour, you can do gouache if you want, if you don't want transparency. So the beauty and the difficulty is capturing that transparency. I still go down there every day. I walk through beautiful grounds here and there has been a lot written about how living in a beautiful landscape can affect is very healing, very healing. And in fact, the Japanese do tree bathing to heal themselves. And they just take a walk through, through the woods and believe that energy and nature and trees particularly and gardens give off a kind of energy. So I want, I want it to be hotter, moving. These marks are because I have different papers on it already. I've played around with the surfaces of the paper. I designed my house, I made my house uh, and my garden. The house I designed around light because light and simplicity was always what was most important to me. And um, I, I, there was a tiny, I think there was just a patch. There, were no, there was no garden except a rhododendron tree. So I, I had to get the, the the garden dug up and I knew nothing about plants, absolutely nothing, but I designed it according to my aesthetics and uh, I get enormous pleasure out of it. It's so beautiful. Of course I should be growing vegetables and everything, but I love flowers, so it's surrounded with flowers. And Jim the gardener here, who in the Tyrone Guthrie Centre, used to say, well, for some strange reason, Mrs, you can grow roses. And it certainly isn't to do with my skills. It just happens to be the kind of soil and the macroclimate there. I went round all the markets in the area and I'd just buy plants that I liked and I'd just plug them down and sometimes I had to get them dug out and transplant them according to how I designed it. You, you sit in my living room, which is virtually a meditation room. You're affected by nature and everyone who comes to the house says there's a lot of energy in that room and I'm sure looking at all the greenery in the nature. But when I come back from India, which is usually about April or March, there's no colour. I mean, it's grey. Then you watch it all unfolding and it's wonderful, a great healer. I'm still thinking of the lake. But I have to see where this ends. This is called wet on wet painting. Um, because I happen to love the fluidity. Some people don't like that because it's fast. You have to have a certain kind of nature that can take that. This is a centre for artists, a retreat, and then um, you have to apply and be accepted as competitive. And the artists come from all over the world. and. For 30 years I always went, sometimes it was just for a week and then as a, maybe two weeks and then as I grew older and the children grew older I was once there for a month. So uh, when uh, unfortunately my second marriage unexpectedly broke up, I phoned up the, the staff here and said, can you get me a bed? And they gave me a bed and I stayed six months. And I didn't know where to go after that, I knew I didn't want to go back to Dublin. And uh, this, these four walls came up, this ruin came up, and I was very fortunate. I, I took a risk, I bought it, but then, as I've talked previously, I have a very strong faith, and I believe that everything happens to me for a reason, and I went with that and the strength of it. Then if it floods in the dirt too much, I just use good old toilet tissue to... I want the grey to be showing through. I love all these lines that are coming up. That's because of the surfaces, but a very prepared surface. And I love the, the way it gathers into kind of puddles. But you have to control it. Watch it doesn't go mad on you. I've lived around the border area for many, many years of my life, although I'm Scottish and Scottish born, as probably apparent. Yes, it, it felt familiar. It was Ulster, not Northern Ireland, but Ulster. And of course, strong Scottish influence in that. And I felt very comfortable 
with, with that side of uh, Ireland. The grounds are beautiful and the lake. The lake is a relatively new thing. I, I, in the 30 years I lived here, I never swam in the lake. And on the whole, Irish people don't tend to swim in the lake. But uh, it's grown and grown now and an awful lot of people who swim with me. So we'll let that sit for a while, see what happens. Don't be afraid to be yourself. And especially when it comes to painting. If you're a painter, paint. As I say, we're out of fashion and there's a lot of people decrying it, but I've always, I've not really had, found it hard to be myself, that's my nature. When I was a little girl, my mother always said, Janet gangs her own gate, which means Janet goes her own way regardless. But really I would say, don't underestimate the value of painting in this modern world. <laughs>